فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We're now going to be doing the third book Insha'Allah ta'ala to finish today uh, in, the, in the program called Dabtul Ilm, Precision in Knowledge we finished previously two books, Al Qawaid al Arba' and Nukbat al Fikr. And today we're going to be doing this book, Thalatha al Usul, wa Adilatuha, written by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Sam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'lam, Rahimahullah. إنه يجب علينا تعلم أربع مسائل الأولى العلم وهو معرفة الله ومعرفة نبيه ومعرفة دين الإسلام بالأدلة الثانية العمل به الثالثة الدعوة إليه الرابعة الصبر على الأداء فيه والدليل قوله تعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر قال الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى لو ما أنزل الله حجة على خلقه إلا هذه الصورة فكفتهم وقال البخاري رحمه الله تعالى باب العلم قبل القول والعمل والدليل قوله تعالى فاعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله واستغفر لذنبك فبدأ بالعلم قبل القول والعمل The author رحمه الله He started his book بالبسملة مختصرا عليها He, he started with the بسملة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم alone He did not say الحمد لله إن الحمد لله or anything else And this as we said before is in accordance to the Prophet's Sunnah and the Sunnah that it's in accordance to is called Sunnatul Fi'liyya. It's in accordance to the Prophet's action-based Sunnah. Meaning when the Prophet will send letters to the leaders. Alayhi salatu was salam and his rasail, rasail and his mukatabat. That he would write, he would write at the top, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So that's a Sunnah that's followed. Then the author, rahimahullah, he says, أَنَّهُ يَجِبُ عَلَيْنَا تَعَلُّمُ أَرْبَعِ مَسَائِلَ That it is obligatory on every single one of us to know four matters. We need to know four things. Everyone here has to know these four things. المسألة الأولى, the first, the first مسألة is العلم knowledge. What does knowledge mean? Knowledge linguistically means, according to the Mantiqiyin, is huwa idraku shay'i ala ma huwa alayhi idrakan jazima. It is to perceive something as it is, is with certainty. Idraku shay'i ala ma huwa alayhi idrakan jazima. It is to perceive something as it is with unwavering conviction. You're convinced this is what it is. But in the Sharia, ah, the word ilm means. إدراك خطاب الشرع ومرده إلى المعارف الثلاثي. It means معرفة أسر إدراك is to perceive the things that the Sharia is addressing you with, and the things that the Sharia are addressing you with revolves around three: معرفة العبد ربه, the slave knowing his Lord, ودينه and knowing his religion. وَنَبِيَّهُ and knowing his Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم So the author here when he says that العلم knowledge is he's actually defining knowledge in its شرعي definition he's defining it in accordance to its شرعي definition the knowledge 
which is requested from us in terms of Sharia have two descriptions. The knowledge that is requested from us to come with by the Sharia is, it has two descriptions. The first one is the knowledge that is requested from you which is connected to knowing Allah, the religion of Islam, knowing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This one is the first one and this is Ilmu Shara'ah. And the second one is that which is requested from you but it's connected to its evidences. It's not considered a knowledge if you don't have the evidences for it. So the knowledge that requires evidences is the three that he mentions here. Ma'rifatul abdi rabbahu wa nabiyahu wa ma'rifatu deen al-Islam and knowing the religion of Islam because this jar and the majroor bil adillah ba is harfu jar al adillah is ismu majroor they are all the harf the jar and the majroor is all connected to it's connected to what the authors already mentioned before which is ma'rifatu Allah wa ma'rifatu nabiyyih wa ma'rifatu deen al-Islam it's not only the last one which is that you have to know evidences for which is deen al-Islam la 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 all of the three is connected to all three of those you have to know them with evidence, evidences. And the author, when he says that you have to know them with evidences, brothers, pay attention to this. This is very important. When the Sharia is requesting from you to know these three, pay attention. But knowing Allah, knowing the Prophet, knowing the religion of Islam with evidence and the Prophet with, with evidence, the evidences, I mean the knowing is of two types that's needed from you. One is called al ma'rifatul ijmaliya a comprehensive knowledge. And that is a person coming to learn and studying what is known as usul al-shara' wa kulliyatihi, the comprehensive matters related to the religion. In other words, the person, he learns this issue in a comprehensive manner. He knows that there's evidences regarding it. He may not study it in details, but in general, he knows as a comprehensive point that there's an evidence for it. He knows, for example, that this is obligatory on everybody. He knows that. He also knows what's fardu ayn on each and everybody. He'll say, Dhuhr, yeah, everybody has to pray it. This is a comprehensive knowledge that he has. And there's another type of knowledge which is al-ma'rifatu tafsiliyya. It is detailed knowledge that's required for it. And this goes back to Ahad al Masail when you look at each, in, each an individual matter, he knows every evidence is for it. The knowledge that the author here is talking about is Al Ma'rifatul Ijmaliyyah. It's the comprehensive knowledge that the person has to know. The Ami doesn't have to know each and every mas'ala, he doesn't have to have knowledge of it, a dilil. The one who needs to come with the ma'rifatu tafsili is who? It is the alim, the mufti, the qadi, the teacher and others. As for the other person who is from the general mass, if he has a ma'rifa ijmaliya, a comprehensive knowledge, then that's sufficient for him. The second, <coughs> sorry, yeah, the second thing that the person has to know is what it has to come with is al-amalu bihi, implementation of it. The fourth thing after knowledge, so the second thing, sorry, is al-amalu bihi, implementation. Bihi goes back to knowledge, implementing what you already learned. What it means, implementation, is the definition for it is dhuhuri. Dhuhuru. It has to be it has to be apparent on you. Khitabu Shari al Abdi. Whatever the Sharia addressed you with, it has to be apparent on you. That's what implementation means. That's what Amal means. What the Sharia addressed you with has to be apparent on you. And the addressing of the Sharia is of two types. 
khitab which is known as khitab khabari the sharia told you information it told you that the hour is going to come allah said wa anna as-sa'ata atiyatun la rayba fiha that the hour will come there is no doubt about it also allah ta'ala tells us wa ma rabbuka bidhallamin lil 'abid allah is not one who oppresses his slaves this is information khabar allah is informing you of there's an action needed regarding it. What's the action that's needed from this one? Tasdiqan wa ithbata. You believe in it. You believe in it. And you affirm it. This action is actions pertaining to your heart. It's amalul qalbi. An action of the heart needs to come here, which is to believe in it. Ithbatan wa nafyan. Whatever the Sharia affirms, you affirm. Whatever the Sharia negates, you negate. Whatever the Sharia states to you in terms of news and it tells you that's going to happen, the action that's needed from you to come with here is what? Believing it. The second one is khitab al-shar'it talabiyyu. It is that the Sharia is addressing you here by requesting from you to come with an action. It wants you to do an action. It's requesting you to do something here. This is the one which is needed from you to do is al amru wa nahyu you have to do bimtithali amrihi wa nahi you follow his action you follow his command and you stay away from his prohibition so he tells you to pray you pray he tells you to fast you fast but you also have to believe in it as well you can't just say i pray and i fast also what's needed with you at that particular point is i'tiqadul hukm fihi the ruling regarding it you have to believe it for example somebody prays dhuhr and he goes, I don't believe it's wajib, but I'm praying anyways. La. Allah won't accept it from you. When you're praying, Allah doesn't just want the action merely from you, but also the belief is with it. That's what action means. The third one is a to ilahi, calling to the path of who? Calling to what? Calling to the knowledge which you have attained. A da'wa to ilayhi, that Nabir goes back to knowledge. The third thing that's needed from you is a da'wa to ilal ilm according to knowledge. What we need to know, brothers, is da'wa stands on three pillars. Da'wa stands on three pillars. Any da'wa that doesn't stand on these three pillars is a da'wa which is fashila. A da'wa that is working towards corruption. It's a da'wa that is going to bring about more harm than it's going to bring about any benefit. And that is. In one ayah in the Quran, Allah says, Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي The first pillar is that your da'wah is the path of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam قُلْ هَذِهِ السَّبِيلِ This is my path. Your da'wah has to be in accordance to the da'wah of the Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. The things that he did is what you do and the things that he stood, stayed away from, you stay away from. قُلْ هَذِهِ السَّبِيلِ This is my path. The first pillar is that da'wah has a path. The question here that we have to ask ourselves is is the path for da'wah, tawqifi, in a sense where are you allowed to add anything to it and deduct anything from it if you want? The answer is no, you can't. The path of da'wah is set. If it wasn't set, the Prophet wouldn't say, this is my path to da'wah. Da'wah is a path that's set. In the Messenger, alayhi salatu the 23 years, he was calling the people to the religion. Was Allah telling him how to do it? Was Allah not telling him how to do it? Allah was. And Allah was guiding him to it, alayhi salatu wasalam. Then the path of da'wah is marsum, it's set. You're not allowed to introduce anything in that path. For you, qif haythu waqaf al qawm. Stand where the previous nations stood. Waqul bima qalu and say what they said. So this is where the scholars then take out. Are an ashid permissible to do da'wah through in the sheets? They say it's not permissible because the, the path of da'wah is what? Tawqifi. The Prophet could have done that 
He could have taken that path. Did he choose to? No. Tawqifi, khalas. Well, hadi sabili is my path. The second pillar, the second pillar is, oh, the first one, many things fall under it. Nasheeds fall under it. Demonstration, doing da'wah through demonstration and waking the people up. Is it? No, it's not accepted. Because the path of da'wah is set. As we said again, it goes back to that point. لا مجال للرأي فيه. There's no, it's not open for any opinions and discussions. The second is, إلى الله you're calling to Allah. The second pillar, the ayah is telling you, قُلْ هَذِي سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ I call to Allah. You don't call to politics. You don't call to yourself and your organization. You don't call to your shaykh. You're not calling the people to a shaykh that you've set and you're saying everybody follow this shaykh. لا. You're calling the people to who? What's your job? إِلَى اللَّهِ you're calling to Allah. A da'wah has to be based upon calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're calling people to other than Allah, then this is a da'wah, as I said, it's going to bring about harm, then it's going to bring about any good. And last but not least, is ala basiratin, based upon insight. Insight here means knowledge. Any da'wah that's not done with ilm, and it's done with jahal, is a da'wah which is fashila. Scholars have said previously, this ayah has, has summarized usul da'wah. This ayah has summarized the foundation and the usul of what da'wah should be about. Anybody who wants to see if he's got a da'wah correct, this ayah is what he needs to look at. Each point, uh, there's so much things that can be said about it and there's more, many other more evidences that can be brought. Because as we said before, the time won't allow us. The time won't allow us. And this itself should be done like muhadara and a talk about it in more details. al masalatul rabi'ah, the fourth mas'ala that everybody has to come with and have knowledge of is as-sabru ala al-adha fihi. Patient upon the harm which you endure in knowledge. As-sabru ala al-adha fihi, the patience that you have to come with is whilst you're seeking knowledge. Also whilst you're implementing that knowledge and also whilst you're calling to that knowledge. All three of them, they need patience. The patient goes back to, for, in what? Fi al-ilmi, ta'alluman, wa'amalan wa'dawatan. The knowledge which you're calling the people, the knowledge that you're learning, as we were talking about it today, in the Sharh of Ta'zeem al-Ilm, what did we say? Knowledge, what does it need? Sabar. And it's sabar, a musabara. What? Ta'aleem. Teaching and educating, educating the people also needs. It needs patience. It's hard to leave your house, sit in front of people and teach them. وَعَمَلًا and also, implementing it is hard. Last but not least, وَدَعْوَةً A man came to Abd Aziz ibn Abdullah ibn Baz, alayhi rahmatullah, may Allah's never-ending mercy be upon him. He was the Imam of our time. Abd Aziz ibn Abdullah ibn Baz, a man came up to him and he cried to him, saddened, because he was giving da'wah for so long and he felt like all the doors were closing on him. And he never felt like his da'wah was bringing out any fruits. And that's something a da'i always feels. Am I blowing into mid-air? Am I watering the, the desert? A person sometimes feels like that. So this man, he felt that way and he came to Abd Aziz ibn Baz. And he told him, I'm, this is how I feel. Ibn Baz took his palm. And Ibn Baz was very old. But look what he said and look how deep it hit. And that's how the ulama see things. He took his finger, her palm and he said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa attaqu allaha la'allakum tuflihun. He said, have you come with these four 
to find success. Four characteristics. Once you find these four characteristics in you and you come with it, then Allah will give you success. The first of them is, Ya Yuladina Munusbiru, be patient. First one is patience. Come with these characteristics of patience. A da'i, a da'i, that's the characteristics he never leaves off. And the Shaykh, the person can't say to Abdul Aziz, I came with all four. If he did, he would not have been in the place in the first place. If he was patient, he would have still carried on. Many people connect their da'wah based on number and how many people they've got following them. And that's what they think that they are successful in their da'wah. If they've got a large amount of people following them, then they have truly made a base of da'wah. Ya akhi yati nabiyun wa laysa ma'ahu ahad. A prophet is going to come and no one is with him. Does that mean that that Nabi, that Prophet, he is upon fashion? Nabiullahi Nuh, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَىٰ خَمْسِينَ عَامًا Nuh was sent to his people for 950 years. And the only amount of people who followed him were people who could go on a boat. With animals in there as well. The ark, which had animals and people, that was what took to religion from him. Nabiullahi Nuh, 950 years he was giving da'wah for. Prophets never connected their da'wah to the fruits of their work. And that's why many people drop off from giving da'wah. They stop it. Because from the get-go, they connected it to the followers. And how the people are. The way you need to look at the people is that the people are like a sick patient who doesn't want to take his medicine. And sometimes when a person doesn't want to take their medicine and if they don't take it, they're going to die. You force that medicine on them. The reason why you're doing that is for what? So they can live. So they can become better, healthier. So it's not always about giving the people what they want. Allah says in the Quran, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍّ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا رَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا فِي نُفُوسِكُمْ Your mom, Allah says, I know what's in your heart when you're dealing with your parents. Some of the mufassirin they took from this, that if you force on, you go against your parents for something that is in it, they're good and that's what you want. Allah says, don't worry, I won't hold you account for what you've done. I will hold you account for what you intended. Rabbukum a'lamu bima fi nufusikum. Allah says, I know what's in your heart. I know that when you were forcing your mom to take that paracetamol, and she was telling you, I'm going to curse you if you give it to me. And saying, mom, you can curse me if you want, I'm going to give it to you. That force that you're forcing on your mom, that is not disrespect. That's your own mom. That you're forcing a worldly good for her. فَمَا بَالُكَ Then what do you think about umam, nations, forcing down their throats, tawheed and sunnah, because it's there saving them from the hellfire. There's nothing wrong with it. It's the in it in their good. Now, not, don't let my statement be taken out of place. I don't mean have su'ul adab and bad etiquettes and bad dealings with the people and try to use that as an example, excuse. Manners is needed in the way you portray your message, and the way you say it. But people have misunderstood manners with concealing the truth. And I think, al Ibab al-Qarafi's Kitab al-Furuq, there needs to be put, it, put a veil on it. Added f differences and the furuq between what's manners, and what is it me being there for you and giving you what you need. That's very important. So the definition of patience is Habsun nafsi is to imprison your nafs. Ala hukmillahi on the rule of Allah. Hukum of Allah is what you prison your nafs on. The hukum of Allah is two types. Hukum which is qadari and hukum which is shar'i. Hukum means rules and regulations and legislations. Sabr means to imprison yourself on Allah's legislations. Allah's legislations is categorized and it's divided into how much? 
it's divided into two. Hukum, which is a legislation which is universal. It's called Qadari. It's a universal legislation. That's number one. Number two is... Number two is... Shari Legislation. The author here, his statement here, he means both of them when he's talking about pri uh, 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 imprisoning your nafs. On the hukum of Allah, he means the qadari and he means the shari. The qadari in what angle? Sometimes you become sick. That's a universal sign. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined for you to be sick. To lose a loved one, a parent that you love, your father, your mother. The second one is what? The second one is shari, which is the ahkam of the sharia. Ah. Ibn al Qayyim brings three out of that. From the shari, Ibn al Qayyim brings three out of it. Sorry, two out of it. Ibn al Qayyim brings two out of it. The first one is a sabru ala ta'atillahi, patience upon Allah's. Allah's obedience, doing as Allah commanded you subhanahu wa ta'ala, getting up for fajr, praying salatul fajr with wudu, in the is patience it needs. Second one is, as-sabru an maharimillah, patience, from the things Allah has prohibited subhanahu wa ta'ala, 